Aloha. Thank you for joining us here at TruthMadeEasy.com as we continue with our Apologetics Made Easy video training course. In this segment, we'll discuss the faith of an atheist. As we'll see, atheists have faith just like other religious people have faith. The atheist has faith that atheism is true, just as the Muslim has faith that Islam is true, and the Buddhist has faith that Buddhism is true. In our previous video, we talked about evidence and faith, and we saw that even though we haven't personally seen God or Jesus or the miracle or the events of the Bible, we, like detectives and a jury, can examine and study the evidence after the fact and be sure of these things that we see here on our screen, that God exists, miracles are possible, the New Testament is a good history book, Jesus is God, and the Bible is the Word of God. We can be sure of these things beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, I need to point out something very important here. As Christians, as believers who have surrendered their hearts and life to Christ, the evidence for point one here, that God exists, is what I would call bonus evidence. It's like ice cream on the cake. Why? Because in addition to the other evidence that everyone has, from creation, conscience, Christ, and the scriptures, things that we'll be talking about at another time, we as Christians have the self-authenticating witness of God's Holy Spirit in our heart. As Romans 8.16 puts it, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Deep down within, we know that God exists. We have a deep-seated assurance given to us by the Holy Spirit that we are his. We are God's children. Now, you'll recall in our last video, we talked about evidence and faith and looked at proof glasses with a blue sports drink here representing the evidence or proof that we have for our beliefs. We saw that when the evidence in the glass doesn't fill the glass to the top, faith makes up the difference. Faith covers a gap in our knowledge, a gap in our evidence or proof. If we have little evidence for our belief, lots of faith is needed. And on the other hand, if we have lots of evidence, little faith is needed. What is often missed is that atheists also have faith. They have faith that atheism is true. They have the faith that God does not exist, that miracles are not possible that the New Testament is not historically reliable, that Jesus is not God, and that the Bible is not the Word of God. How do they know these things for sure? Do they have 100% absolute proof, for example, that God does not exist? Of course not. No one does. We are all limited human beings with limited knowledge. Since the atheist does not have 100% proof that God doesn't exist, they need faith to believe what they believe about God. Same with miracles not being possible, Jesus not being God, and so on. Atheists also have lots of faith when it comes to the origin of the universe. What caused the universe? The Christian view is that someone, God, created or caused the universe. For only an infinite being possessing supernatural intelligence and power could create such an amazing and exquisitely designed universe like ours. The atheist believes that no one caused the universe. Well, I ask you, which view is more reasonable? Which requires more faith to believe? The atheist also believes that all life forms originated from a simple, one-cell, amoeba-like creature in a warm pond on the very early Earth, all by itself. And from this one little cell came the trees, the fish, the birds, humans, and every other living thing. Now, did the atheist witness this firsthand? No, no one did. So both the atheist and the Christian need faith to believe what they believe. While the atheist believes that nature created all living things by itself, the Christian believes that an intelligent being created everything. Which view is more reasonable? Which view requires more faith to believe? By the way, that simple, one-celled creature, that first life from which all living things supposedly came from, according to evolutionary theory, it turns out it's not so simple after all. As we'll see in later videos on evolution and the design of life, that simple one-celled creature contains within it the informational equivalent of not one set of encyclopedias, but 1,000 complete sets of encyclopedias. The Christian believes that an intelligent being, God, placed this information inside the cell. The atheist believes that nature did it all by itself. Which belief is more reasonable? Which belief requires more faith? As Norman Geisler and Frank Turek point out, the less evidence you have for your position, the more faith you need to believe it, and vice versa. Faith covers a gap in knowledge. And it turns out that atheists have a bigger gap in knowledge because they have far less evidence for their beliefs than Christians have for theirs. In other words, 
the empirical, forensic, and philosophical evidence strongly supports conclusions consistent with Christianity and inconsistent with atheism. Now back to our proof glasses. As we learned, if we have little evidence, lots of faith is needed. On the other hand, if we have lots of evidence, little faith is needed. What one discovers as they study the evidence is that there is far more evidence to support the claims of Christianity than there is to support the claims of atheism. With little evidence, the atheist needs to have a whole lot more faith than the Christian. So if your atheist friend ever kids you about your faith, tell them how impressed you are with their faith and that they have way more faith than you have to believe the things they believe. Then admit to them, you know, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. The cleverly worded title from a text we're using by Norm Geisler and Frank Turek. Who knows? You might get them thinking. Because the fact is, the atheist does have faith. A strong faith with little evidence that atheism is true. Having said that, we need to remember that for some atheists, it's not a head thing. It's not a lack of evidence that is keeping them from putting their trust in God. Instead, it's a hard thing. Some people just don't want to believe no matter how much evidence you show them. One famous atheist, Frederick Nietzsche, is quoted in the book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, as saying, if one were to prove this God of the Christians to us, we should be even less able to believe in him. Hmm, that's not a head thing. That's a heart thing. It's a matter of the will not wanting God. As Geisler and Turek also comment in the book, someone has once said that the distance between heaven and hell is about 18 inches, the distance between the head and the heart. But why would someone say such a thing as Nietzsche has said here, paraphrase, even if you could prove that there is a God, we're still not going to believe. Well, there's many reasons. A few that come to mind is that some people believe that God will, what, cramp their style, that he'll take all the fun out of life. Others may have been hurt by a Christian in the past. Perhaps you've heard the saying that the number one thing that keeps people from becoming Christians is Christians. There are many not-so-nice Christians, people that have given Jesus and Christianity a black eye. Now, this is not to say that there aren't many wonderful Christians who are displaying Jesus in their lives. There are people like you who genuinely care for others who don't yet know Christ and who are studying to find answers to their questions. So how do we tell if it's a head thing or heart thing that's holding someone back? Well, you might consider posing a question that Geisler and Turek have in their book. If someone could provide reasonable answers to the most significant questions and objections you have about Christianity, reasonable to the point that Christianity seems true beyond a reasonable doubt, would you then become a Christian? Their answer may give you a better indication of whether theirs is a head or heart thing. If it's a head thing and the person is open, then yes, the evidence can be a big help to them. But if it's a heart or will thing, well, that's a different matter. Pray for them and ask God to soften their heart and make them open to examining the evidence. Evidence that is all around them. Speaking of evidence, God has provided all kinds of evidence of his existence through creation, conscience, Christ, and of course the scriptures. We'll talk more about conscience, Christ, and the scriptures in later videos, but for now, let's take a look at creation. In Romans 1 we read, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Romans 1.20 Note the words that are underlined. Invisible, clearly seen, from what has been made. The wondrous creation around us, which we too often take for granted, declares God's existence. As Psalm 19.1 puts it, the heavens declare the glory of God. And in verse 2 we read, The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Still, there are many who don't see God. He remains hidden from them. Perhaps you've heard a comment like this. If God really exists, why doesn't he just come out and show himself? Well, maybe you've wondered this yourself. I know I have. As a young Christian, I used to think to myself, man, if God just showed himself, everybody would believe. Everyone would become Christians. So why doesn't God just come out and show himself? Why does he seem to be a hidden God? Well, we're going to look at that next in our video, The Hidden God. Please join us for that.